Formal programs are in place to manipulate the public for self-serving government and elitist interests. We've obviously seen it with the suppression of free speech and the overstep on multiple areas of the Constitution in recent years. But what's unfolding now with the economy, the dollar, and the government's plans for the future takes this to a level of corruption only seen in third world countries. I'm going to help you see what comes next because once you know the truth, the veil is lifted. You're not blind anymore and you can actually do something about it. I'll show you how you can make your own educated choices that put you and your family's best interests first. Coming up. I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer specializing in strategies. And let me tell you, the governments and the central banks have been at this a whole lot longer than you and I. So you need to have that strategy in place. I'm going to tell you, if you don't, click that Calendly link below and get an appointment with one of our consultants to get your personal strategy in place ASAP. Now I'm going to take you back for a little bit of history so you can see this clearly and especially for those that haven't watched any of the other pieces I've done on perception management. And we're going to start with our very good friend Henry Kissinger who was instrumental in creating the petrodollar. And what does he say? It's not a matter of what is true that counts, but a matter of what is perceived to be true. And hey, he was instrumental in taking us off of at least a quasi gold back dollar into a pure debt based dollar. The man knew what he was talking about and he's still around amazingly. But this is when it was formalized was with President Reagan in the early 80s, who changed the laws and the rules to bring Rupert Murdoch over and, and that's in advertising and in media. And he changed it so that he could help formalize perception management. And this was all happening as that new debt based system was born and coming alive because it's so much easier when the public just volunteers. And that's really what perception management is all about. Because if they can control how you perceive things, then they can, at least in theory, control how you move forward. And we've certainly seen this quite a bit lately. Whose benefit is this for? Do you think that, this, that these powers are putting your best interests first or just the interests of the few over the many? Because that's what I see. Now, my good friend, not really a friend, Alan Greenspan, my mom always used to say to me, but Lynn, don't you think Alan Greenspan is smarter than you? Don't you think he's smarter than you? And I'd say to her, Ma, I certainly hope so, because he has a whole lot more influence than I do. But if he actually believes the garbage that's coming out of his mouth, then the answer is no, he is not smarter than me. And before he became the Fed chair, well, he was a big proponent of money that was fiat money that was convertible into gold. He was a huge gold uh, proponent. He lost that during the years he was Fed chair. Now he's back to it again. But here he is in 1993. If we are dealing with psychology, then the thermometers one uses to measure it have an effect. What would happen if the treasury sold a little gold in this market? There's an interesting question here because if the gold price broke in that context, the thermometer would not just be a measuring tool. It would basically affect the underlying psychology. And so all of these times when I'm showing you the spot gold market, what they don't say, if you're listening to the talking heads, do they say the spot gold market? No, they say gold. They say gold, but there's gold and then there's gold. This is physical only market. And these have been going up, up, up. 
The spot gold market is absolutely manipulated to keep you away from this because once you're in this, they can't see it. It's blind to, they're blind to it and they can't control it. But what are they buying? They're buying gold. So I love that. And this is actually a Fed chair admitting to manipulation. Now, mind you, we don't get any of these documents until years after they've been said. But there, my friends, is absolute proof of them manipulating gold. And there's more, but that's not what this is about today. Okay, back in 2004, the Pentagon weighs the use of deception in a broad arena. What? Would the Pentagon deceive anybody? Such missions could take the deceptive techniques endorsed for use on the battlefield to confuse an adversary and adopt them for convert propaganda campaigns. Do you really think that they would not use this knowledge to manipulate you and me? Because think again, the military has faced these tough issues before. Nearly three years ago, Defense Secretary Donald H. Rumsfeld, under intense criticism, closed the Pentagon's Office of Strategic Influence. I love how they name these things. Strategic Influence, also known as Perception Management, a short-lived operation to provide news items, possibly including false ones. <gasps> No, would they lie to us? No, uh, to foreign journalists in an effort to influence overseas opinion. Do you think they do it here? Cause I do. Now critics say some of the proposals of that discredited office are quietly being resurrected. They are? Yeah, here we are in 2023 inside the Pentagon's new perception management office to counter disinformation. Oh my goodness, out in the open. On March 1st, 2022, the Pentagon established a new office with similar goals to the one once deemed too controversial to remain open. Very little has been made public about the effort Shocker. And I hope you realize I'm not really shocked. What I'm trying to show you here is that this is happening. And when you ignore it, well, it doesn't mean that you are not influenced by it. That's the whole point is that influence. But wait until this is the, this is, this is the piece that makes it so flippin' blatant. Now you guys know that I put the links to everything on the blog posts. So you definitely want to read what, not just this article, but I want you to read about the underlying suit that's going on. I don't know what's going to come of it yet, but it's mind blowing when you read this. It's mind blowing. But social media rebuffs shows Biden overstepped on COVID misinformation. Really? Is that a possibility? This is not, and I want to make this quite clear. This is really not about whether you believe all of this stuff from COVID or you don't, and you're vaxxed or unvaxxed. This is not about any of that. It is about how they, they dish out the misinformation so they can choose what goes out there. And you have to really do your due diligence. Don't take anybody's word for anything. Don't take mine. That's why I give you the links. You disagree with me, rock and roll hoochie coo. I can't say anything about that. But following and believing blindly does not serve you well. It's that simple. The existence of an emergency doesn't cancel the freedom of speech. When the government makes swift decisions out of a sense of urgency, it is more likely to err, not less. Thus, dissent is of even greater importance and suppressing it is even more contrary to the public interest. And I'm telling you right now, and you know, because I've said little bits about it, there were a lot of things that I have wanted to say that I did not say. Why? Because if I did, they'd pull me off the air. And I know a lot of people that were pulled off the air for speaking truth. We're going to get more into that in a minute. 
Moreover, whatever the justification in the past, the emergency is now over by the government's own admission, yet as described in Dowdy's ruling, the administration, and he's the judge in, in this proceeding, the administration's pressure on social media companies continues and is growing to encompass other issues. Democracy thrives on open debate, even if that means letting people say crazy things during a public health emergency or saying horrendous things about others. If you stifle, if you stifle free speech in one area, guess what? You're going to do it wherever it's convenient for you. The administration's pressure on social media companies continues and it's growing to encompass other issues. So this is the suit. I'm not getting into the suit, but I definitely, definitely encourage you to read this whole thing. It's an interesting read. Once you start reading it, you're not going to be able to stop. Read it. Do yourself a favor. So there's the judge that's overseeing that. And, and these are his comments. Most of the posts that are, well, this is from the article about his, his opinion, and then you'll have some of that too. But most of the posts detailed in Darity's opinion did not violate platform policies. Nevertheless, the White House succeeded in getting the companies to downgrade, label, or remove them entirely. So, you know, who do you have ruling us right now? We do know how strong all of those media platforms are, and they're getting more powerful. The overall picture is one in which the government seeks to establish an official position on an issue of public importance and then, through pressure on social media companies, makes it difficult for those who differ, disagree to find an audience. We all saw that happening, didn't we? So this isn't something that you can go, well, that, that didn't happen. We saw it in real time happening. I know people that it happened to many. What makes this case different and even scary is the systematic nature of what the White House has been doing. From the micromanagement of which posts should come down to demanding regular reports on compliance. I mean, really, what do you think about that? Read this suit. Read it. Do yourself a favor. Because democracy thrives on open debate. Do we have open debate anymore? No, we do not. We do not have it. And I know because I had to do it myself and it killed me. But I need to be here for you. So absolutely make sure that you read this suit. But ask yourself, how great was the pressure on these media companies? Sufficiently great that a Facebook executive responded to, buy, to one official by assuring them that the company wanted to know how to get back into the White House's good graces. We're keen to amplify any messaging you want us to project. I mean, as my grandson would say, because it's so obvious, but there are more of us than there are of them and we are all in this together. Now, some of the examples that they use were only a few examples of the efforts by the platforms to please officialdom. You want me to show you another way that they please officialdom? Ta-da! They're lobbying spending just in 2022. And there are all of the players that control the internet. What do you think, you guys? Do you think that they might be having an impact on what information actually gets through to you? Do you see these things are hiding in plain sight? I have no more access to information than you do. The difference is, is that I'll dig and dig and dig until I find it. And thank goodness I was a banker and I was a stockbroker. So I understand this language and what they're saying. But make no mistake, the, these, these guys that are also kowtowing to the government, because why? Why would they do that? Maybe because it's the White House that makes the rules. And they want the rules for their benefit, not for yours, not for mine, for their benefit. 
Do you trust any of these players? No. In gold and silver, I trust. In gold and silver, we trust because we are all in this together. And it is critically important that you see how and that you are being led to move forward in a way that benefits them first. But the reality is, is that people are starting to notice. I get how frustrating it's been. I've been doing this for a long time. I get how frustrating it is, but rest assured, people are starting to notice. The U.S., you know, are we a democracy? No, they want us to think we're a democracy, but we aren't. And we are an oligarchy. There are many things that we are, but unfortunately, we are no longer a democracy. So we took a look, or this, this entity took a look at the likelihood, the, the predicted probability of adoption of what different areas entities want. So th these are all the present favoring, so we're talking about the government, Congress, favoring proposed policy change. And what do we see? The average citizen's preferences, they really don't change, right? It's just right across the board. The economic elite's preferences, well, you know those are gonna get passed because they're greasing that wheel. They have the ability, they have the money to grease that wheel. And even interest group alignments, they're greasing that wheel, they're getting what they want. But the average citizen, meh. Do you think that the, we are truly being represented? And you know, in the age of AI, in the age of blockchain technology, we don't need all of these politicians that are supposed to represent us, but don't really represent us. Why don't we just use blockchain technology and let the citizens vote? Hmm, hmm. I never hear them talk about that. They'll use blockchain to technology to track every darn thing that you're doing so they can control you, but they're not gonna be subject to it. Well, I say yes. It was my good friend, Gerald Salente, that brought that up. I think it's brilliant. But what you need to be looking at is the United States new peers after declining in the last, uh, by 11 points over the last decade, the U.S. aggregate score for political rights and civil liberties now falls close to the middle of the free spectrum, according to Freedom in the World. This is where we were in 2010, right? So you can see at 94, this is where we were. Well, guess what? This is where we were in 2020. We dropped 11 points. And who's near us? Oh, Mongolia is more free than we is, are, so is Argentina. Isn't that interesting? Ghana's below us, hmm, so is Poland and Jamaica. But do you think that we've lost even more civil rights and liberties than we had, I mean, since 2020? I mean, freedom of speech is on the line and that really came in more after 2020. So how much further down the line are we? And is that okay with you? Because after declining by 11 points over the past decade, God, we're right in line with Argentina and Mongolia. We're lower than them. But gold protects your wealth and your freedom. You hold it. You own it outright and it protects you from geopolitical turmoil. And it provides the opportunity to have the wealth shift your way. Why do you think all the central banks are accumulating so much gold? Because the US, the, not just the US, actually this is globally, we are losing confidence and losing faith in our governments and in our central banks. We are at historically low levels in this arena. This is the average confidence in major U.S. institutions between 1979 and 2023. And you can see this steady, steady decline. It's going to get worse. Americans' confidence in institutions in 2023 represents the continuation of the historic confidence deficit recorded a year ago. None of the 15 institutions rated annually managed to repair their images, with many remaining at or near their all-time lows. 
and this whole thing. This is a con game. They create this money out of debt. And then you and I are responsible for paying with dollars that have less and less and less value until we're at zero. And we're not far from that now. Officially, we're at three cents. This con game is over when the public loses confidence in the system. And we are this close. Rapid inflation makes that happen more quickly, but make absolutely no mistake about it. We are close to the end. That's why you see global central banks accumulating gold like that. But I want you to make sure that you are paying attention to what's going on. So if you haven't already, you want to make sure to subscribe so that you can stay on top of this. And I really hope that you read that, that, that suit and realize how much the government and the central banks actually manipulate us for their benefit and for your detriment. And if you haven't done it yet, click that Calendly link below, get your strategy in place. And yeah, the foundation is with physical metals, which is outside their purview. The only thing they can influence is the spot market. They can't influence the physical only market. So if you like this, please give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, and uh, I mean, critically, share, share, share. Because ignorance doesn't make you immune. It just leaves you vulnerable. And I don't want anybody to be vulnerable. I want the powers that be. They should be quaking in their boots, which they are, which is why they're getting more and more aggressive. We are coming to a close. We are coming to an end. You can be in a position to benefit but you got to have sound money. You've got to. And until next we meet, please, please remember that financial shields are made of physical gold and physical silver in your possession. And please be careful out there. Bye-bye.